how much they can give in the offering plate. God's yeah. not concerned about that. Uh, all He's asking for is a reasonable service. Yeah. Yes, sir. And all of these other things. See, after we get our heart right, uh, and after we get our mind consecrated by His Spirit, God, yeah. the pocketbook and all that other stuff gets sanctified yeah. and gets saved, uh, and we don't have to worry about it. The pastor called me several years ago right after I come here and God was blessing. He said, Preacher, what are y'all doing up there? He said, I was up there and said, your offerings is good and your attendance is good. I said, it could be better. But it's all about Jesus. I said, we get people in love with Jesus Christ and all this other stuff will follow in place like it's supposed to. Amen. We come to the altar because we got a need and we don't want Jesus Christ Lord of our life. Let me tell you what was happening. This is good preaching for the workplace. I was at Kroger when I worked for them. Had a preacher there. And I'm not saying that I, I'm Mr. Knowledge and I'm Mr. Know-it-all. And I do, do know one thing God has taught me a lot. And I still got a lot to learn. And I realized a long time ago that everybody wasn't going to like me. And that's, that's their problem. Yes, sir, Reed. That intimidated me for years, mm -hmm. but he don't no more. What? No, sir, I'm a child of the king. Amen. Amen. This preacher called me. Uh, I worked with him. He hollered at me, and I'd seen him. He'd been talking to this guy for about an hour. And on the clock. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another preacher friend of ours, uh, years ago, the, the, the mine owner or the superintendent or one of them, he called this preacher in. I could call him by name. Up on Pranner, and he said, where do you want us to build your church at? He said, what are you talking about? He said, you're missing so much work. He said, we're going to build your church and let you go do what you need to be doing. <laughs> this guy talked to this gentleman for about an hour. And uh, he was supposed to be working. And finally, he motioned for me. He said, come here. And... Uh, you know how you get vibes? Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting good vibes. Nope. So I went over and he said, I want to take this guy in the back room and pray for him. I said, okay. So we went in the back room and he told me, he said, he's got a bad back. And he wants it healed. I said, all right, let's pray. He started jabbering on about something. I said, let's have prayer. So we laid hands on him and, and got done praying. I shook his hand. I said, buddy, I hope you get to feeling better. Well, about a half hour, 45 minutes later, the guy left. My buddy come over there and he said, hey, he said, I need to talk to you about something. I said, yes, sir. He said, buddy, you did not too happy or too into it when I called you back there to pray. I said, call him by name. I said, let me tell you something. I said, I hope I did the right thing. I was following the Spirit. I said, was that guy a Christian? He said, no. I said, did you ask him if he wanted to be saved? He said, yeah. I said, what did he tell you? He said, no. I said, but he wanted his back healed, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you're going at it the wrong way. Going at it the wrong way. He said, I can't believe you. I said, the Bible said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Amen. Yeah, we want the Lord's blessings and we want the Lord's healing, but we don't want the Lord inside. And I said, furthermore, this is good medicine for all of us. I said, Kroger's pays us by the hour to work, not to preach. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. That'll make a bunch of people snarl up their nose. That's right. yeah. But it's a truth. Right. They hire us, Gary, whether it's the state or whoever, right. to do a good job. Amen? Amen? And they pay us to do a job. Right. It's a church's duty to pay us to preach. Amen? Amen. Right. That's right. Or whoever. And you say, preacher, a lot of people, Gary, mm -hmm. will love and talk about the Bible just to justify their laziness. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Come on. You 
was that fuzzy boss's part time down there, and Ronnie's the boss, and some more of you. Don't let these people do that. Buddy, the Bible says to live honorable. That's right. And give honor to those that have rule over you. Yeah. But the psalmist said, The Lord's my shepherd, and I shall not want. Right. Right. What's that mean, preacher? He's going to take care of me. Sure he will. He's yeah. going to take care of me. Mm -hmm. Barbara, you do worry? Sure you worry. Barbara had a big battle with her daughter. Her daughter the, the going through a valley here in the last two weeks. But the Lord sees us through, don't we? We don't have to want. And we spend a lot of our time. You know what's going to happen? We're going to get to heaven, Gary, and we're going to look back and say, Golly! <laughs> I put up with a bunch of junk I didn't have to. You're right. And I walked through a lot of valleys. I could have went through there. My goodness yeah, gracious. Going around. Yes, sir. Could have went around. Mm -hmm. As Ricky was talking about this morning, and a lot of times we want to go around the fire instead of going to it because yeah. we don't want him to walk with us. I don't know if you got anything out of it or not, but I did. Those Dan Ikes looked there and they said, man, we're going to a place. That disturbed me when I thought about that, Gary. Yeah. We're going to a place that that place ain't even no want in the land. Right. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Cecil living in a place where nobody wants for nothing? Nobody wants for nothing. Nobody needs nothing. And I believe with all of my heart we could live a whole lot better than we do now if we distrust the Lord. Would you stand in the